You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Hello everybody out there, my name is Eric van Deniken, I am the author of Chariots of the Gods and uh, quite some other titles. First, my hypothesis. Thousands and thousands of years ago, extraterrestrials visited our planet Earth. Our forefathers at that time were Stone Age people. They had no idea of technology, so they believed, erroneously, that these extraterrestrials are some gods. Of course, we all know there are no gods, but our Stone Age people believe these are gods. So the so-called gods entered into mythology, into the legends, and also into the great ancient religions. This is the hypothesis, the basic idea. Hello everybody out there, my name is Eric van Deniken, I am the author of many books including Chariots of the Gods. Long, long time ago, nobody knows how long, but I guess at least 6,000 years, some gigantic spaceships surrounded our planet Earth. From these spaceships smaller vehicles came down, and out of these smaller vehicles some strange beings. Now, our ancestors at that time were Stone Age people. They could not understand what was going on. They had no idea of technology. So they believed erroneously that these beings are some gods. We all know there are no gods, but that's what our ancestors believed. Now, how can we prove such an idea? There are many possibilities. I have mentioned some of them in my earlier lectures here. And here, in this speech, I bring new arguments not told to you before. In ancient India, there are gigantic texts, books, bigger, much bigger than our Bible. Here we have our Bible, meet maybe about 500 pages. In ancient Indians, we have texts called the Mahabharata. They have roughly more than 2,000 pages, several volumes. One of them is called the fifth volume, the Mausola Purva. And in this fifth volume, you can read that one day flying machines have come down. The old Indians called these machines the Vimanas. There are, by the way, different types of Vimanas, which is not the contradiction. Simply remember, we, in our days, we have different types of aircrafts. A helicopter is not the same thing as a jumbo jet or not the same thing as a military fighter. So there are different types of Vimana described in old, old Indian. Out of these Vimanas, some strangers came. Now imagine these strangers, they behave themselves like today's technology would do. They studied a few groups on our planet, learned the language, took a few boys out of them, etc. I will come to this back. So all this is written down in the fifth book of the Mahabharata. And there also, they clearly say that they took one of the old Indians up. His name was Arjuna. They learned him their language. And finally, they learned him writing, astronomy. And he was many years up there in space. Today, we would say in a modern spaceship. And then he had to understand that these beings out there, they had some kind of wars. They had not the same opinion. Some of these extraterrestrials wanted to take over mankind. They wanted to misuse us as slaves, slaves. Other wanted to take our raw material. So there were different meanings. And finally, <coughs> Arjuna describes that there was a war in heaven. Of one of the flying machines, in my eyes, a mother spaceship, glittering rays came out and two other of these uh, mother spaceships were destroyed. 
War in heaven. Is this not just imagination? I mean, we all have our imagination and we see the lightning, we hear the thunder, we hear maybe a, an earthquake and we think this is a war, a war in heaven. Now it's not fantasy. Why not? It's too precise. Because these humans who were up there, they have learned, learned. They were teached by these extraterrestrials. And by the way, a war in heaven. We have this in our own Christian and Jewish religion. Don't you remember that in the Bible, the Old Testament, there was a war in heaven? In heaven there was paradise. And in paradise was an archangel with the name of Lucifer. And he went to the throne of the Almighty God and said, we do not serve you anymore. And the Almighty God asked for help of the Archangel Michael. And Michael threw out Lucifer out of heaven. So we, in our own religion, we have a war in heaven. It was not fantasy. We simply have to change a few words of our tradition. For example, heaven we should translate into space angels i mean different angels are described and we always believe these angels are wonderful beings they are described with hell a uh, halos and wings around their heads but there were not only good angels there were bad angels too these angels they had sex with humans Spiritual beings have no sex with humans. And what I say, they had sex with humans, is not just Eric von Däniken's imagination. You find it in the Bible. When the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were puny, they took them to wife. The same thing in the Kebra Negest, which is the oldest Ethiopian tradition. They clearly describe sex and they even give the names of the extraterrestrials. Again, in the book of Enoch, etc., so it's not Eric von Däniken's imagination that they had sex. So angels, real angels, have no sex. By the way, some of these humans were taken up there and they describe exactly what happened. And today we have to change our attitude to these old texts. I mean, in the past, it was normal when some brilliant professors, they came to old texts and they start to translate it. Now they read that some humans were taken into the sky. So of course they looked at it in a religious way, in a religious psychological way. But in the meantime, the spirit of time has changed. We know it was not psychology. It was not believing. It was not religion. It was true. So we have to change some of these words. Plus, I suggested change heaven into space, change the word angel into extraterrestrial, and only 10 words you have to change. And you change the whole content, the whole meaning of all these things. Again, coming back to the angels, they were not only good guys or good fellows. Read in the second book of the Kings, chapter 19, when an angel simply from the air killed 185,000 Assyrians. Just like this. There was no war, there was no fight, no fight mans against mans, no, no warriors, nothing. Simply from the air, he killed 185,000 Assyrians. Now you can say again, it's imagination. It's not because all these wars have been represented by our ancestors in form of pictures. Look, there was a god in Iran called Azura Masta. We have pictures where he descends. And he descends, obviously, as a warrior. He fights against humans. Or in Egypt, we have always this flying, flying sun disk. But the old Egyptians were not stupid. They knew that the sun could not fly. They mean, in reality, extraterrestrial some kind of chariots up, up there. And all this is seen. For example, the biblical Jacob sees a stairway from heaven and the so-called angels go on the stairway up and down. Or in the first book of Moses,
Hi, I'm Billy Carson, researcher, speaker, and best-selling author of the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets and Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. I'm inviting you to join me on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv to enjoy hours of great programming, learn the secrets of ancient Egypt, unexplained structures on the moon and Mars, financial literacy, holistic and healthy lifestyles. Go now to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv and get three days free. While there, you can enter to win a Rolls Royce. That's ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Hi, my name is Billy Carson, and I'm the president of Forbidden Knowledge. We have an amazing investment opportunity here for anyone who wants to buy shares in Forbidden Knowledge. The money that's generated from this crowdfunding platform is going to be used to bring on a new content acquisitions partner. We're going to hire a new in-house graphics designer, a social media manager, a put together a customer service team and a customer service management program that will organize and satisfy all the different legs of Forbidden Knowledge Inc. As well as, and of course, make more improved high quality streaming content for the Forbidden Knowledge TV platform, which right now is featured on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, iOS and Android apps, and also of course, the web. The streaming platform is a year old right now and doing very, very well. And we're looking for your support where you can not only be a conscious customer, but also be a part owner in an amazing opportunity that includes streaming TV, book publishing, and e-commerce. Grow with us and earn with us. Forbidden Knowledge Inc. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.